Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. So recently I was interacting with students over Instagram and LinkedIn and many of the research scholars who are applying for postdoc positions, they mentioned to me that they have written a lot of emails, they have written a lot of cold emails and there is no response from the other side. And when I asked them to share what email they have written, I found a lot of mistakes in that. So I thought to make a video where I can tell you that what are the things that you can do in an email so that you can get a response or the chances of your response increases okay and uh, this thing i applied on myself i when i was applying for the postdoc position i also dropped a lot of cold emails and uh, my like for me the response rate was nearly around 50 to 60 percent this is a very good response rate actually if you consider it like if i drop 10 emails so i was getting response of around five to six there are chances that some emails will be ghosted considering that those lab does not have any vacancy or they don't have any funding so they they will not bother to respond to you uh, but there are like 50 to 60 percent response rate is a good response rate so that's why i thought to make this video where i'm going to talk about this in detail so do watch this video till end first of all also if you are new to this channel please do consider subscribing it i make research related content on this channel phd related and postdoc related specifically so let's start with it okay so this video will be particularly for postdocs for PhDs, I already made a video a few days back, so you can watch that video. But for postdocs, this thing changes, okay? The, the previous video is not going to be sufficient for you because a lot of things are different from a PhD and a postdoc perspective. When you are a postdoc, you are not asking for something, okay? A PhD scholar is asking for a lab, is asking for a place where he or she can work with the other lab, but a postdoc has to offer something, okay? So it's like you are on the upper hand, you have to offer something so the whole idea of this email or whole idea of your conversation should be in a way that you are offering something to the other lab and it is in benefit of that lab that they should hire you that should be the core idea okay and you have to get out of all your insecurities get out of all your uh, you know if you are underconfident or anything just get out of that they you have done your phd you are a doctorate already and you should have that confidence in you so you have to play that confidence in that email okay so let's start okay so first of all when you are when you start uh, like when you think of doing this the first thing which you have to do is make a spreadsheet i always emphasize on this because a spreadsheet is going to keep all the data with you it is going to help you to send reminder emails to the professors in case because see what happens that let's consider that i am a professor okay i am a professor of a particular lab uh, in let's say any country so i keep getting a lot of emails from a prospective postdocs and they keep asking me or and daily when i will open my email there will be like hundreds of emails sometimes it happens that your email can be you know it can be buried out so there are other tricks for that do let me know if you want in that video also i can help you with that i can make another video on that but here i'll be talking upon the content of the email okay rather than the other things all right so the first thing is make a spreadsheet now in that spreadsheet you have to keep certain points uh, or keep certain columns the first column or the major column should be the name of PI, uh, the name of person to whom you are applying, then the institute, the university or the lab or institute which you are applying to, then the topic of research because if let's say you are organic chemist, you will be applying in different like related to chem uh, topics, right? You will be applying for organic synthesis also, uh, like the core topic of interest or the core research area will be different for different labs. Some, some lab might be working or upon CH activation, some might be working upon a specific group functional group some are working specifically on carbohydrates let's say you were trained in organic synthesis but now you can apply in all of these right so that is what you have to mention in this column that what is the specific area of research of that particular lab and then their uh, status like what was the reply status whether they have replied not replied or whether they have rejected okay or whether they have asked you for the interview so these three four options you can keep i can make a video how to do that but I think you are smart enough to do it okay so i won't be going in that detail so yeah making this spreadsheet is going to be very important because this is going to keep a uh, track of everything and let's say after one week when you have applied in so and so lab you can go back to the spreadsheet and see how many labs have replied to you and uh, whom you have to send a reminder email okay because sending reminders email also helped a lot many times all right the next thing which you have to keep in mind is quality over quantity now dropping hundreds of generic email might not give you any response but 
dropping down 30 or 40 specific emails quality emails can be something which you can expect a response from the other person and i'll tell you about that okay i'll, I'll talk about that in video so if you if you try to write your email in that way there are high chances that the other person is going to respond to you all right so you have to always be more towards quality side rather than quantity side you do not have to accomplish something by writing hundreds of emails okay that is not going to make that is only going to give you much of you know anxiety after writing 100 emails let's say you are not getting any response so that is going to give you a lot of anxiety so write uh, quality emails okay so that is something which we have to consider the third thing is that you have to research about the lab let's say you now thought of you have gone through certain labs and now you are interested in applying to a particular lab let's say in harvard university so the next thing is to research about that okay research about that lab so you have to go to the uh, to the google scholar and you have to uh, read their last three papers okay that is why quality that's it that's where your quality will come you have to go through their last three papers now you do not have to read the entire paper of course it's time taking you can take advantage of various ai tools for that okay there are various different ai tools i have been uh, like i have been talking about that in a separate playlist of videos where i talk about ai for research uh, you can watch those videos also so there i have discussed that how you can use those ai so you can summarize those papers over there using those ai and you can like read those papers quickly now in a research paper you don't have to go through each and everything you have to go through three important things number one you have to go through introduction you have to just uh, you know you have to just go through the introduction you don't have to go in depth of that but you need to understand how what's what was the idea of the of the author how they came up with that particular research so what was the idea so that is important go through the introduction see their figures graphs diagrams whatever they have published in that paper go through that because that will give you idea of how uh, because that will help us to write the next part okay being creative over there so go through the diagrams and other things and the third thing is the third and most important thing which you have to read carefully is the conclusion part because conclusion will conclude their research paper or their research work that what they have done and what they are trying to do and what they are thinking of doing in future so try to summarize this conclusion part using ai and that is going to give you certain points and that you can use in the next uh, part when you're writing your email okay now this thing is very important doing research about that lab because in that way you are actually going to understand uh, the lab which you are applying and you can offer things to them okay then only like when you know that what that person is doing or what that person wants or what that person is actually trying to figure out then only you can add on something right if you don't know what that person is doing you can just you just go and ask that okay i know this and this can you take me in your lab the other person is not interested in that case okay so you have to first understand what they are doing and then you can offer something from your point from your side okay so that's a very important thing next thing is you start writing your email okay now when you are writing your email the most and most important part is your subject now when you open your gmail or outlook or any email uh, like if you open any of your email what is the thing which you see you see the name of sender which of course you will be unknown to the other person and you see the subject right the whole content of the email is not visible when you just open your inbox now here you have to understand the situation of a professor okay because they are daily getting a lot of emails for you you are writing an email once but considering consider them they are getting like hundreds of email daily from different part of world okay especially when i'm talking about professors in abroad us europe and other places they are getting a lot of emails from different part of world so they do not go through each and every emails okay and that is what they have like i i talk to a lot of professors directly and they have also mentioned this to me that they don't directly or they don't read every email so you have to be very creative with your subject line your subject should be in a way that that is going to be so appealing that the other person clicks on that email and reads your email unless and until your subject is unless and until they are not interested in your subject they are not going to open your email if somebody is not even opening your email so the idea of sending the email is not served right so you have to be very creative with your uh, your subject now here your idea of research like whatever you have gone through their research lab 
that is going to help you whatever you have gone through their three previous research work that is going to help you so you can take any of their work from the last three of them and you can write something like uh, uh, your last or you can just write like your uh, work on so and so was thought provoking or you can just write it down like uh, this finding of yours kept me thinking about it something like that or or you can just include something more creative like uh, like for example you can write down that your this work aligns with mine something like that so you have to make your subject line of like separate out from others you don't you cannot just write on generic subject line subject line is most important understand that okay so once you write your subject line uh, that is going to make sure that the other person clicks on it and reads that now comes your email okay so your email has to be like there should be three properties of your email there should be three characteristics of your email first of all it should be appealing as i said your subject line should be appealing you so that the other person clicks on that second it should be creative so that the other person feels like yes the uh, you have done some homework you have read something about their lab and the third thing is that it should be informative as well that what information you want to convey okay so these three points you have to keep in that particular email now email does not also have to be very long you have to keep that short also and uh, now you can start with your body of the email see being a research scholar you must know this thing that we as a scientist we are very much uh, you know each and every research paper of ours is like we are very uh, close to that we we love to hear about it like how people are reading it you know every time if you are if you have already published any paper you know that how much happiness it brings to you if it gets cited so yeah it brings happiness so you the first few points should be about their research work that what you have went through what you have read and what was interesting in their research that is going to give the other person some self uh, you know some sense of happiness some sense of achievement although they have already done a lot of things they don't need that but still it's a good way to introduce or it's a good way of having a chat with anyone let's say if you meet someone uh, randomly you'd say hi hello or whatever and then if you know that person a little bit you can start talking if you want to that person to if you want that person to talk with you a little longer you have to first talk about that few things which you know about him and you have to convey to him that yes you know about that and you like those things about him same way you have to do in email okay so first few lines or the first paragraph will be about uh, what work you have went through and what you liked in that what was appreciating over there okay that is going to give the other person more interest to read your email further now comes the most important part okay here you are going to convey the other person that how you are going to be useful or what skill set you have which can align with their work so you have to now in a subtle way you have to now include your uh, like research area or your work or anything which you have done similar to what they have done or anything see research is very overlapping you will find something or the other which you might have done or you might have explored or you might have read or or like done some technique which might align with theirs so you have to now include that in the next paragraph okay you have to tell that what are the things uh, that you have that you have as a skill set and uh, that aligns with their research work and if possible uh, you can suggest something for their their work although it's it it is very subjective it's like you are not going to you you won't be able to do it for every email but still if you get a chance you can suggest something like suggest some method or suggest something which you think can be a very good way or if you have any question that is also a good way to include that in that particular point that uh, i was thinking about this and this i i did a similar work during my phd i did so and so things i learned these and these things and while i was doing these things which are similar to yours uh, i found something like this could you uh, like something like that okay you can mention over here you are just being very casual you are just trying to bring the conversation from their work to your work okay you are just trying to shift the uh, the flow of the conversation okay that's the second paragraph and then comes the last paragraph where you have to ask the other person now you cannot just say that okay if you have a position just hire me okay it's it does not work like that you have to ask them 
uh, for a reasonable thing okay you have to ask a reasonable request to them it's always better to ask for a 15 minute chat because see again i'm telling a scientist's time is very important and it's very uh, you know it's very crucial it is for everyone but if somebody is already a professor yeah, he is already having a lot of work to do he has to take classes uh, he has to maintain his research lab he has to attend a lot of conferences and he has to give talk and all the other things within that if he is taking out time or if he can take out time with you it's going to be very 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 important thing or it's going to be something very uh, that's that's could be the first uh, you know building block of it so this is going to be very smart way of asking the other person that if possible could you uh, can we have a 15 minute chat that is the best reasonable request which you can make so that could be done in, at the end of the, that email this is going to be a very interesting way because now what you are trying to do is you told you have already conveyed this information to the other person that you have read their work you are interested in their work you have your own skill set which aligns with their work and you are interested to have a chat okay and if everything goes well you are definitely going to get a response from the other person uh, if they have a time to chat or something like that or they if they do not have any time or if they do not have any you know uh, funding or anything they are going to tell you straight away but if they are they get impressed with it which of course they are going to do there are high chances that they are going to get so you you might get a response from that that yes we can like we can schedule a talk or a zoom meeting or something schedule a talk schedule a uh, like zoom call or something and in that call you can talk about your position okay because then you have a better upper hand now you are in person to that person now you don't you you are actually talking to that person in person like face to face on virtually and now you can present your thing okay you can talk about things and keep a presentation always ready whenever you are talking about whenever the other person asks you for a zoom meeting so I'll talk about that in another video like regarding Zoom meeting and this. But I thought to convey all this information because these are the things which generally people don't look upon. They just keep writing the generic emails and they just keep pushing those emails. And when they don't get response, they get, uh, you know, of course, this is disheartening. So that should not happen. So I thought that this would be useful for you. Uh, if you guys want, I can also like explain you with a template like different templates for that so do let me know in the comment section if you guys want specific templates for it although i think that would be like too generic again i don't want to generate a generic template for that uh, but yeah i can tell you as an example how to do that okay so do let me know if you are interested in it and do let me know if if these things uh, if you think that these things are going to help you out and try it out definitely okay if you are if you are already applying for different positions Please try to make your emails in this way. Try to write these emails in this way. And there are high chances, maybe more than what percentage I got as a response. Maybe you will get a better response rate than me. So yeah, try to include that in your emails. And these are going to be super useful for uh, your uh, like postdoc application. Do let me know what you guys think about it. Do let me know if you have any specific query, uh, if you have any specific topic for me to make a video upon. I would be very happy to include that in the upcoming days and if you guys want a particular template based video i can try making that as well all right so that's it from my side for this particular video thank you so much for watching and i will see you guys in the next one until then have a great day bye bye